If you could like and subscribe to the channel, Creepy Signal, bringing you all your nightmare material. And today I thought I'd do something that has been highly done, but also add to it an account. And so, today I'm doing the tale of La Llorona. That is right guys, I'm doing Lloroncita, and um... What can I say? It's it's a really hard subject to, to cover, especially, you know, from a woman's perspective, you know, that someone could do such a, a terrible, terrible thing. And it's just, you know, I know a lot of people want to do it for the subs and the views, but from my perspective, you know, it's just like, it's really sad because, you know, it's not like Donkey Lady. How many people do you hear about hybrid donkeys, right? With, that's like a centaur. Zero, other than the donkey lady. But, you know, when women, unfortunately, murder their children, that's like something that I have to kind of weigh and say, hey, you know, it's just views. It's not really worth it, you know. But when I think of La Llorona, I also have to look at it from, you know, the, the positive perspective, which is, which is that it's a cultural story. And not only that, but think about all the stories that may have prevented you know, women, you know, thinking about murdering, you know, her children. So I think that, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to think about the, the pros and um, not so much focus on the cons. So it was, it was something that I really wanted to stop and think about. And that's the kind of person that I am, you know, there has to be some sort of principle to it. It's not just about the views. They can go, you know, screw themselves. But to me, it's all about keeping the culture alive and also think about, you know, the positive effects on things. So, without further ado, the Dark Queen's gonna get into it. And so, the tale of La Llorona. It's well known, we're talking, you know, accounts from, you know, the Aztec era to, you know, we're talking different continents of the world. You know, it's not just, you know, in Mexico, it's not just in the United States. You know, we're, it, it happens. You know, that unfortunately women, they go to that level, that horrible, horrible level where they just murder their kids. And so the tale of La Llorona here in San Antonio, we have that very Western sort of aspect to it. Very almost little house on the prairie, you know, gone, gun smoke, if you will, with the wagons and the burros and, you know, it's very much a time when, you know, you, you still were on horseback and San Antonio just wasn't already a city with standard brick and mortar buildings. No, you were still very wooden with stone buildings, if you will. And, you know, they say there was this beautiful woman. Her name was Maria. And Maria, she married a very handsome man. And she thought she was super happy super happy. She had given him lots of kids, that there was nothing wrong. But then, Maria found out, well, her husband wasn't true. Couldn't keep that vow. And back in the day, some women just dealt with it. They just said, it's got a wandering eye. Women didn't have very much rights. And so, but Maria was heartbroken. She fell into the darkness. That sorrowful, depressing darkness. You know, she could feel his anger. And she knew that she was going to have to go to great lengths to get back at her husband. And she did the unthinkable. She had taken her children to the river. And she had drowned each one of them. And I don't know. 
I can't honestly say if she was she realized what she had done she had taken the lives of her children or she had ultimately hurt the love of her life I don't know I don't know what it was but she took her own life she couldn't live with any of it I guess. and when she dies and she had found herself at the gates of heaven Heaven would not happen. They said you need to go look for those souls that are drifting, that are floating. And to this very day, she travels at night, weeping, searching, crying, yelling, trying to find the souls, spirits of her children. That is such a sad, super dark and dismal urban legend. I'll tell you right now. Donkey Lady is all about revenge, being a monster, killing people, but encountering something so sad and depressing. Just, I don't know. I don't really think it's scary. Well, you know what? It is scary. The fact that someone could go to those lengths. I know people are going to get all up in, you know, the psychological aspect, but we're talking about the paranormal aspect, you know, and even if it's not paranormal, it's really about, you know, the cultural sort of aspect of addressing these sort of issues, right? Maybe trying to focus on prevention, things like that. And um, I just find it absolutely disturbing on the fact that kids died and that's a dark queen getting all becoming a softy and darkness but you know it's true but let's get into the account because yeah it's not all just you know sorrowful stuff we're talking about San Antonio we're talking about here well it was a few years back the dark queen was I don't know nine about nine years old, yeah. I was, I, was, I was still learning about the paranormal, about the urban legend, still trying to ask my granny about some of this stuff that's going on. And we had a neighbor next door, renter, not a buyer. That would have been cool if he bought it so we could talk more. But his name was Eric, and he was like six foot four, and he was like a teenager. He was like 16, 17. And, you know, we'd have fun, talk about pellet guns and, you know, comics and stuff. And it was one night where it was already like 11 o'clock at night. And um, we were talking about, you know, um, pellet guns and stuff. And he was saying, oh, yeah, I keep a pellet gun, you know, and stuff like that in my car. Uh, because you never know, you could get robbed or, you know, run into weirdos in the park. And I was like, well, okay, whatever. I was like, why, you've like almost gotten robbed or what? And he was like, no, no, there was this, this thing we saw and we don't really know how to describe it. And I was like, well, what do you mean, Eric? Like, what's going on? He was like, it was a lady, but it was like, she scared me. I don't know if she was crazy. I don't know what she was. And I was like, oh. And so he goes into telling us this story, me and my older sister. And we were like, whoa. And so it takes place at Brackenridge Park. We're talking like the mid... I want to say like pretty early 1990s like 95 something like that and so um so I guess it was the mid 90s but he was basically saying that he was at Brackenridge Park and if you've never been to Brackenridge Park it's a beautiful park now but back in the day it was an uh, okay kind of park people fish there's super deep water um, for the zoo that is nearby and it's very, it's still heavily forested, even to this day. And uh, what was super crazy about this story is that he's a super tall guy, his friends are super tall, you know, and uh, they were kind of like just hanging out at the park around, you know, midnight, smoking cigarettes, doing stuff that high school guys should not be doing, you know, but just chilling out in the park. And um, he said that he had gone to the bathroom and his friends were waiting for him in the car and so, all of a sudden, he said when he's coming back, a woman is hollering to him to come, you know, over to her. 
And so he's like walking and she's like, she's like, my babies, my babies. And he's like, oh my God, like what's going on? So he, you know, starts running a little bit faster. And so she's like, help me, help me. My babies are in the water. They're in the water, all of them. And he's like, okay, okay. Um, he's like, hold on, let me get my friends. You know, we've, there's like three guys in the car. Let me, let me get them to help out. And uh, she was like, she's like, no, no, they're in trash bags. You need to get in the water. And he was like, what? And so he's like, he's like freaking out. He's like, they're in trash bags in the water. And so he's like, hold on, hold on. Let me just go get my friends. He was super nervous about it. So he runs to his friends and his friends are just there chilling in the car. And he's like knocking on the glass saying, hey guys, there's this lady over there and there's no cell phones back then. You know, it's just guys. And he's like, he's like telling him, should we help her? I don't know. And so his friends were like, nah, they didn't believe him. They thought he was like pulling a great prank. And they're like, yeah, 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 we'll go over there. So they drive and there's nobody there. And so he's like, so we drive and there's nobody there. No woman. And I was just like, wow, that is incredibly creepy. And so from that perspective, like I didn't put it together. He didn't call it La Llorona. He just said she was a woman that was crying, screaming, my babies, my babies, they're in the water, help me. And then I realized, oh crap. That's a story of La Llorona. So with that, I thought I'd do that episode and um, it's pretty, yeah, to me, I really don't like to talk about it, but I said, you know, why not from the cultural aspect after much deliberation, inner deliberation, but you know, I thought I'd cover that particular urban legend. Well, that's it. It's me, the Dark Queen, asking you to like and subscribe or like our Facebook page at Creepy Signal. Oh yeah, I will catch you later. See you later.